Ooh, guys, you know what time it is. It's time to get weird. Okay, guys, this is a patron-only episode. If you're watching this and you're not a patron, I'm a... I'm, I'm a... I'm, I'm sorry to have to say this, but our cybersecurity team is now on the case. They're on, and they're on your case, frankly. Let's go to a clip of them, please. Well, guys, I'm recording okay. this on September 11th. So I thought I would tell my September 11th story. You know, who cares? You might say, well, that's not nice. That's not, come on, man. Um, my September 11th story is pretty stupid. I was basically still a, a child. I was in my late teens. And I would stay over at my friend's house. I had a friend who, he lived, with his, he lived with his mom and his sister. His mom was a single mother, and they lived in a pretty, like, dilapidated townhouse but i would stay there all the time i would stay there i would sleep over his house like every night because he <laughs> i'm not lying he had the best internet connection he had an amazing internet connection and his mom let us do whatever we want so the night of september 10th 2001 i stayed up i mean all night i stayed up all night playing grand theft auto 2 <laughs> I stayed up all night playing Grand Theft Auto 2. It was just the overhead one, and I was just like, this is a man. I was so taken by Grand Theft Auto 2 that I was just like, you know, half falling asleep playing this overhead car game. I love the cover to the game, people. Put the cover on the thing. It's pretty, not, not a bad, very 90s cover. Yeah, so I stayed up literally, literally. I stayed up literally all the way until the sun came up. I mean, we're talking into the morning. <laughs> my friend's sleeping. I'm just, I mean, I, I have just lost my mind. I cannot stop playing this Grand Theft Auto 2. I'm kind of nostalgic for Grand Theft Auto 2, to be honest. Like, these kind of older games. Uh, yeah, so eventually I hit some kind of Grand Theft Auto 2 wall, you know? And I'm like, okay, I want to keep playing this, but <laughs> my body... My stupid body is shutting down, so probably just like as the sun is coming up, uh, I, I pass out on the floor. But uh, I'm kind of awakened, you know, I hear somebody's voice, they're like, wake up, wake up, you know, wake up, you know. And my friend's trying to wake me up, he's like, wake up, wake up. And I'm like, it's, I went to sleep late, stop. He's like, no, no, you gotta wake up for this. Something's happening, you gotta wake up. And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's getting, like, heated. I'm getting mean and annoyed, you know? And he's like, seriously, you want to wake up for this. You you definitely want to wake up for this. I know it's early or whatever, but you, you really want to wake up for this. And I, I pretty distinctly remember this, as I said. I said something along the lines of, nothing so important that I have to wake up right now. And my friend just went like this. Okay. So I kind of missed 9-11 because of Grand Theft Auto 2. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letter that we wrote on behalf of the NAS. Oh, jeez. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters. Oh, boy, man. This is obviously a terrible story and it's a comedy channel. But I did want to play this video because it is a very... It is a very strange uh, viral artifact, sort of social media artifact, because, you know, old Mila and Ashton seem like, uh, you know, they seem nice enough. You know, Mil actually, I just thought of this. Mila Kunis actually made a sequel to American Psycho. Let's p play a clip of that now. Lynn, for her pleasure. Yep. But what's interesting about this video is that it does seem just pure, purely uh, PR. Pure, just pure PR. The other thing I was wondering about this story is like these, uh, let me read this really quick. K Kuchner, Kuch, how do you say his name? Kuchner. Ashton Kuchner said this guy's family approached them af after the actor was convicted and asked them to write character letters. That's the other thing I was wondering is like, how much do these character letters even matter? You get convicted of a terrible crime and then you read this letter from somebody who's like, I've known him a long time. He's actually a nice guy. Ooh, okay. You're free to go. I, 
I mean, they're right. This is probably gonna damage their career. For for what? For what? I mean, the best theory I've heard so far is that the Church of Scientology has some dirt on them. That that. I cannot think of any other explanation as to why you would do this. Okay, but before we move on from this, uh, I want to play one more Ashton video that is a little is a little troubling. Check out this Ashton video. Like I have an app in my phone in my pocket right now. It's like a beat app. Oh. It's a facial recognition app. I can hold it up to anybody's face here and like find exactly who you are. Whoa. What internet accounts you're on, what they look like. Weird. That's terrifying. Don't do that. Like I have an app in my phone. Hey, you better not use that app on me, Ashton. You better not punk my ass with that app or I'll give you one of these. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so Ashton is involved in a lot of like uh, investing crap, tech investing stuff. So he might be bullshitting. He might be doing a little hype. But uh, I hope that's not real. Who would use that app aside from perverts? You know? Ooh, look at that lady. Who would get her email? Nobody would have that on their phone for any noble reasons. Oh, no, I just. You know, my family. I need this for my family. You know, maybe I forget my wife's email. I point my camera phone at her face. Oh, it's, uh, there it is. Okay, let's check in with this guy. That is my own sperm. I haven't heard from him in a while. Oh, he's doing a. He's doing a 9-11 special show where he's going to uh, go off about 9-11, I guess. Here we go. Said differently. Yeah, okay. 9-11 presented an opportunity to create a permanent oligarchy. Boom. An oligarchy we are still living under today. Okay. And boy, is this a lesson for those of us. How do we react when tragedy strikes? And honestly, during COVID, we failed the test again. Oh, come on, Fear. Man. Panic, alarm, horror. We were against the lockdowns from the beginning. We were against spending $7 trillion, but they did the same sort of media manipulation platform. And by the way, 9-11 was not even about manipulation. It should strike you in fear. Okay. But when you are afraid, how do you act? Boy, is that a lesson that we need to internalize. Well, I don't know if that's the greatest uh, Charlie Kirk little bit that I've ever heard or just the greatest news segment of all time because he's just like, Quite a roller coaster there. He's comparing 9-11 to COVID-19. And he's like, we made the same mistake. We made the same mistake we did with 9-11 for COVID-19, which is fear, horror. And then he's like, it's good. And actually, okay, 9-11 was horrible, horrible. And you should have horror and fear. You know, the terrorist attack of 9-11 itself, but also the aftermath, Iraq war, Patriot Act and all this stuff. He's comparing that to like businesses closing and people having to wear masks. It's it does seem to be taking 9/11 slightly lightly on your 9/11 show. You know, there's like a Benihana in Arizona where Charlie Kirk lives uh, that he couldn't go to during uh, you know 2020, and that was his 9/11. Okay, so it's somehow this is not even the weirdest stuff that Charlie Kirk has been saying recently. What is this? And this is from today, the day I'm recording this. He tweets this out. 22 years after 9-11, when the country declared war on jihadists and established a vast surveillance state, Joe Biden has turned the Leviathan against you, declaring war on everyday Americans. And then Charlie Kirk goes on to describe these everyday Americans, I guess. Quote, that supremacy is the single most dangerous terrorist threat in our homeland. Okay. Okay, so first we got Charlie Kirk tying 9-11 uh, to the horrors of not being able to go into a Panera Bread for a year. And now Charlie Kirk is uh, like, oh, look what they're using. Look at who they're going after. This is unbelievable. Look who they're going after. White supremacists. <laughs> That's, I don't like that. What up, guys? Hi. Welcome to the Just pearly things youtube channel and welcome to pearl daily where i cover this week's treachery debauchery and craziness before i start guys can we please get to 2,000 likes this video make sure you like the video that is the most important Calm metric down. that youtube uses to push out these videos okay you know we follow this young lady this nice young lady pearl uh on youtube and i just want to let you know she has some amazing merch out check that check out this merch you could do this and you get some of this merch check this out 
YouTube uses to push out these videos. Also, guys, if you want to be the ultimate alpha male, hell yeah, the ultimate I D G A F guy, get yourself a women shouldn't vote T-shirt today. You will have women left. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me check that. Let's check that T-shirt design. Oh man, look at that design. Who'd you get to do that? Okay. Also, we really <laughs> gotta check out Pearl's uh, salesmanship here. Check out Pearl selling this shirt. Listen to this. Alpha women shouldn't vote t-shirt today. You will have women. <laughs> Left and right coming up to you, just saying how amazing you are. <laughs> how much they just enjoy your shirt, right? So get... <laughs> Get your women shouldn't vote shirt. Um, the link is in the description. Amazing. Also, we're Amazing improv there by Pearl. Poor old Pearl. She's pretty young, you know, so you can still see the wheels spinning. She's like, and people will come up to you and they'll tell you how much they like your... And it's like, what, what am I talking about? A, a shirt. So they'll tell you how much they like your shirt. Your shirt. Oh, great, Pearl. Okay. Yep. I was thinking about this, and I figured out what I think is most interesting about Pearl, because she's generally kind of uninteresting. She's not... How can, how can we put this? She's a bit of a blank slate, I would say. So not incredibly interesting. But there is something that's interesting about her, which is if I became as famous as she has at her age, 26 or 27, however old she is, she's been on giant show, network shows like Piers Morgan... Uh, the Red Scare podcast has talked about it, you know, like Hassan Piper, you know, she gets millions of views on TikTok and all this crap. If I reach that level of fame and money, I would be like, okay, this is kind of serious. This is kind of serious. I got to sort of step up my media game I mean, here. I got to kind of, I got to at very least not look stupid. You know, I got to do what I can to avoid looking very, very stupid. And... Pearl does not have that. No, no, no. Nothing useful. Yeah, yeah, but like, like the first thing you said before that was like, wow, that podcast talked about him. Hassan Pike talked about him. That's what he meant. Pearl does not have that at all. And this story is a great example of this. She uploaded this just six days ago, and a couple weeks ago, uh, I looked at a video of hers where she's, like, talking about Steve Harvey. She's like, oh, Steve Harvey's wife cheated, you know? Steve Harvey's wife cheated, and they're getting a divorce, and this is why you can't trust women, and you can't trust Steve Harvey's um, current wife was, like, a single mother at some point. She's like, you can't trust single mothers. They're all bad. Um, but then it turned out that that story was fake. That it was just like an internet rumor that his wife cheated and they were getting a divorce. So, so she uploads another Steve Harvey video where you would think she's like, okay, I guess I got that one wrong. I don't know. But the title of the video is Steve Harvey's divorce was obvious. Okay, okay, all right. Well, I guess let's check this out. They said they're not good. They came out. They said they're not getting a divorce, but. I don't know, maybe Pearl knows something that, that Steve Harvey and his wife don't. But this one I actually did see on TikTok. So as you guys may or may not know. Okay, so good to know that Pearl has a good source of information. TikTok videos that she scrolls by. Okay, great. Steve Harvey has been in some hot water. So there have been rumors that Steve Harvey's wife, Marjorie, cheated with his chef and his bodyguard. Now, Right, right. On, on TikTok, when you're scrolling through, you're going like this. Boom, boom. That's you scrolling. Boom, boom. And you, and you don't fact check it all right to be fair steve does deny these rumors so right. we don't know 100 percent if this is true <laughs> however looking at their relationship dynamic throughout the years uh the shoe fit i mean steve married a woman who needs the spotlight it's very obvious she seems okay. to lead the relationship uh, but i do really love this this is such a great lesson in media you know uh what's so two weeks ago she does a video called steve harvey's wife cheats on him with his bodyguard and private chef right so you make a whole bunch of uh, red pill assumptions. You're like, oh, women can't be trusted. Women are crazy. Uh, single mothers are all bad. Women are all sneaky, you know. But then the thing that you're basing that on uh, didn't happen. 
So then uh, a couple weeks later, you upload a video that's like, well, the possible. It's possible because she does have some of the things that I said would lead someone to cheat, uh, even though they didn't cheat in this case. Uh-oh, guys. It's time for a world-famous news segment. That's right. Shachuka check. Shachuka. Shachuka. Just kind of focusing on myself and the shakshuka I want to make. Shakshuka. Or the Beyonce concert I want to go to really pays off when shakshuka. I'm hard on myself for not being oh. aware society tells me I should be in life. Okay. Why do you guys think that this video went kind of crazy viral and what what's the analysis here? Candace Owens went on the show that I kind of I kind of admire the show because it's just like it's just like everything old will be new again. I mean, this is basically like, you know, this is basically like Maury or like they, all those shows that I watched when I would like stay home from school in the 90s uh, have come back, which is kind of like stupider. Candace Owens versus a bunch of like OnlyFans models and uh, sex workers, I guess. But they watched the Shakshuka video and Candace Owens is really... And Candace's own is really set off by this. That particular woman that you just looked at is a selfish bitch. She's a selfish bitch. Men shouldn't, men should men should not marry her. That's my personal opinion. You wanted to come in really quick? Yes, Candy. This is a sort of a funny little clip because I finally watched that entire Shaq Shuka video. And it's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing in life. I mean, this is one of the things that life throws at us that it's just like, you're like, how do I... How do I possibly figure out this impossible riddle? Thank you, life, you asshole. Is she's like, look, I feel like I should probably be further along in my life, like I should have a family and kids, but but uh, I make myself feel better about it by knowing that there are things that I can do that I couldn't do if I had kids, like just be totally lazy and selfish sometimes. I can fill my yoga pants with shakshuka. And that's the little riddle that life throws at you is like, if you don't have kids, yeah, you can be more selfish. You can do whatever you want. You have way more freedom of movement and more money, maybe, and more free time and da-da-da-da. But in order to have a family, you give that stuff up. But I love that Candace Owens is just absolutely... She's just absolutely... She's just completely... Shakshuka. By this. And I think this is funny because Candace Owens is a kind of a new mother. And what this could be is I have friends who have younger kids, and it's it's hard. It's hard. I'm not gonna, you know. It's hard. If you have a kid out there, you know it's it's it can be harrowing, honestly. And I think Candace Owens <laughs> watched this lady saying, "I can eat shakshuka all day." I covered myself with shakshuka, and I will watch TV all day. And I think it pissed her off. I think it pissed her off because she's really in, like, the hard part of having a, kid, a young kid where it's it's a constant thing and you lose sleep and you, you know, uh, if this is red pill content, well, at whatever is a lot of red pill content. And man, oh, man, does it make drive people crazy. Oh. Like, the people who get into this stuff, it really, it is a black hole of craziness. Check this comment out. This is one of the top comments. Candace is absolutely right. The girl in the viral video, the Shakshuka girl, is a narcissist. And if a man married her, as soon as she doesn't feel like being married, she will file for divorce and <laughs> what? And ruin the life of her husband and their kids because of her selfishness. If a man marries a woman like this, divorce is absolutely guaranteed to happen. I mean, I mean, talk about like projecting some insecurities there. This is literally a woman who uploads a video who's like, uh, I feel like I probably should have kids by now, but I comfort myself that, that I don't have a, a husband and kids uh, by sh with shakshuka, by shower by showering myself with a shakshuka. And this poor, unfortunate soul just sitting in an at whatever comment is like, the women, they're just gonna leave. The selfish bitch is just gonna leave and it's gonna ruin my life. Me personally. This woman is gonna ruin me, the person typing this person in my life. 
people do make fun of the red pill content, but the red pill content consumer, the red pill swallowers, oh man, it's hard not to feel sorry for these people. These are some of the most insecure people, I mean, yeah. we could ever. Okay, one final goddamn thing here, guys. One final little shakshuka that I want to share with you guys is this. What is this goddamn guy's name? Yeah, of course, it's Ken Clippenston. Everybody's favorite, uh, you know, I don't know, he does like Poyer requests and all this crap. Um, he did a really interesting article in The Intercept that kind of, I feel like almost somebody should make like a series out of this. Almost like a, like a Michael Clayton kind of thing or something. But so whatever, here's the headline. Disney list. <laughs> this, this also shows like Ken Clippenston's approach to uh, reporting that like he likes like digging through crap. <laughs> Like, digging through job posts to try to get what's going on with Disney. Disney lists $330,000 crisis PR job after CEO insults striking actors and writers. Disney looks for PR help after Bob Iger, who earns $31 million a year, derided strikers as, quote, not realistic. Uh, you know what? Let's roll the clip of him saying that. There's a level of expectation that they have that is just not realistic. So this is really interesting because I think the average person recognizes these writers and whatever, all these people striking. They recognize them as similar to them, that they're people who have jobs, that they work, and they have kind of taken their side. I think most people have taken the writer's side if they care at all. So this is kind of a, this is kind of a sticky situation because it's like that's your audience. You know, that's your, that's your Disney audience. So what do they do? They start hiring these uh, very expensive PR crisis managers. Okay, before we go, the patron-only segment, A Moment of Positivity. Okay, to today's A Moment of Positivity. I wanted to share this uh, maybe with you guys. Maybe somebody will find this of use out there. But I somehow lost uh, a significant amount of weight over the past, I don't know, month or a couple months. It seemed to have happened very quickly, and I want to try to figure out how did this happen, because I've been trying to do it forever, and I've never been able to do it. How was I able to lose? I lost about 20 pounds, according to my scale, and I wanted to give an idea of how I think this happened. I mean, it's a complicated psychological thing, losing weight, but I do want to give one piece of it. This is real. This is real advice. You know, I'm going uh, Joe Rogan here a little bit. But what I think finally worked for me to uh, slim down a little bit is uh, taking a taking a nutritional supplement every morning. Uh, I've been taking chlorella with uh, some other crap, aminos. Uh, if you want the full if you want the full ingredients, uh, put it in the comments. But this is my little stupid theory. This is my little stupid Joe Rogan, you know, Kuberman or whatever that guy's name is theory. I think what happens is uh, is when you get all those quote unquote nutrients in the morning uh i think you're less likely to have cravings because your body's like okay i think i got what i need there's a good chance what i'm saying is complete bullshit but it's the only explanation i can come up with because right when i started doing that i started rapidly losing weight so if you want this supplement drink recipe put it in the comment i'll put all the ingredients but anyway guys love you so much hope you're having a real shakshuka see you tomorrow Bye-bye. Well, guys, we are living in a pretty weird time because we are experiencing right now a huge moment in American history. That's right. Uh, Little Caesars now has a calzone. It's called the four quarter. What the hell is this? Oh, you look at that thing and you go like this. This is somebody eating that thing. <laughs> okay, there is one other thing that's going on, which is that the United Auto Workers are on strike. It's the first time in history the United Auto Workers have gone on strike against the three manufacturing behemoths at the same time. Whoa. Okay, so I'm a moron.
I'm what we call a common street level moron. So what the hell's going on with this? What's the story to this? How is business at the big three car companies? That's who they're striking against. Uh, the big three have been rolling in it. They've made 20 billion in profit over the first six months in 2023 and roughly a quarter of a trillion in North America over the last decade. Whoa. They're going like this. Okay, yeah, so this is a historic fight between these big three car companies and the United Auto Workers Union. This is the president of that union. His name is Sean Bain. And he's really not taking any bullshit from anybody, That's this sick. guy. This guy looks right at these car companies and he goes, That's on YouTube. <laughs> okay. He doesn't say that. He says, You're a moron. <laughs> and if the companies don't come to the pump and deliver for these members and give them their fair share of economic and social justice, we'll amp up the pressure. We'll take more plants out. Okay, so usually when I think of a strike, I think of everybody walking off the job. Okay, we're all we're all out of here. And we're all out of here until we can make a better deal. But what these guys are doing is some strategic, you know, some kind of strategic, you know. The UAW on Friday struck at least three plants, one of each at the big three automakers. None of the plants is particularly crucial to the automakers' operations. Okay, let's check this out here. The strategy here is to maximize the hurt on the company. To, maxi to maximize the on the company and minimize the impact on strikers in the union more generally, says uh, some professor of sociology. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty intense. You know, it's like, how can we strategically inflict the most pain on these companies if they won't make a good deal with us? And we keep making it harder and harder and more chaotic for these companies. Joining us now is Ford CEO Jim Farley. Who? With our own Phil LeBron. Phil? John, thank you very much. Jim, we're a little over seven hours away from the strike deadline. Where do things stand? You, you've made your most recent offer. What have you heard back? And by the way, CN, what is this crap called? CNBC has been really going off on this. They've been going off like true kings uh, about this. <laughs> and they're talking to all these CEOs. And this is the Ford CEO. And immediately when I looked at this guy, I was like, what? what's it going on? There, there's something familiar about that guy. You suck. Bitch. And then it clicked. Oh, he's got Farley face. That guy looks like Chris Farley. He's got like a Chris Farley kind of look. And then my eyes went. My eyes went down, and it's and it's Ford CEO Jim Farley. He is related to Chris Farley. That's why he looks like that. There's no way we can be sustainable as a company. That's why we put our proposal in two weeks ago to say, look, you want you want us to choose bankruptcy? over supporting our work. He is kind of going into a little bit of a Chris Farley mode there. And keep in mind, this is CNBC here. This is not some like left-wing thing, you know, you know, some left-wing Twitter account or left-wing Reddit crap or something. This is CNBC. And all the comments, I mean, I read through, uh, you know, reading like 50, 100 of these comments and they're all on the same side. Listen to this. I don't work at Ford, but what I'm hearing is there is money for everyone except those who actually make the product. Ooh, hey. Okay. Here's another comment. I am a United Auto Worker for John Deere. I was involved in the 2021 strike. The company was singing a similar song about how paying us fairly. They were going. The company was playing a similar crystal flute about how paying us fairly would result in bankruptcy. Currently, they have made $10 billion in profits. The big three would be just fine if they pay with their workers a decent wage, blah, 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 blah. So the, the, the CNBC videos and all these videos do seem like they're kind of trying to do some PR stuff. They're like, oh, if we give these people what they're asking, the whole company will go in toilets. But none of these people are buying it. All the comments are on the side of these uh, striking workers. Yeah, I actually am kind of confused why CNBC wouldn't just turn the comments off for this, because it's... Because it's kind of clear that they're spinning this on the uh, the CEO side here, but it, but all the comments are like this. What a surprise! CNBC doing propaganda for corporations. Color me shocked. Oh, nearing that deadline. Phil Lebeau is here now with the GM Ooh. North America president. Phil, take it away. Never heard of him. Okay. Thank Phil. you, Scott. Mark Royce, president of General Motors. You just made a fourth okay. offer earlier today to the UAW. Let's talk about this a little bit. Okay, so yeah, CNBC has been doing a lot of this where it's, you know, you have these two sides, the workers and then the, uh, and then the you know, the CEOs of these companies, the presidents of these companies. And, you know, CNBC is, it looks like it's letting uh, the, the CEOs kind of tell their side of the story here a little bit. But on every one of these videos, people are just not having any of it. And this guy's saying the same thing. This is the president of GM. 
And he's saying the same thing as the other guy. He's like, oh, this is terrible. We can't give them what they want. It's too, too bad. And pretty much all the responses, the vast majority of the responses are like this. This is just sad. The UAW is going to be responsible for so much loss. This guy isn't going to be able to install the gold shark tank bar at the third pool of his fourth vacation home if auto workers don't agree to work for less than it takes to survive. Oh my God. The commenters are really doing this on these CEOs. So yeah, there's a lot of these kind of videos and people are really looking at these CEOs of these car companies and saying, you're terrible, you're, 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 you're terrible. And where do we see them? That's on YouTube. When my okay. friend Neil bent over, this happened. happened. You're a moron. Hey, hey, come on, is this man. So here's another one. This is Mary Barra. She's the CEO of 